Hello and welcome back to Nordy's Forgotten Flicks. In the 90s, Disney was going through an age called the Disney Renaissance, where every film they made seemed to make hundreds of millions of dollars and get great reviews. And so, a lot of other animation studios tried to copy that, with mixed results. And even Steven Spielberg and Simon Wells tried to get on the pot with the final film from Amblimation, Balto. The film is directed by Simon Wells, the great-grandson of H.G. Wells, who, despite his directing career pretty much being over after the huge bomb that was Marge Needs Moms, is still working on a lot of DreamWorks movies, so don't feel too bad for him. This film turned out to be the third and final film for Amblimation before Spielberg eventually closed it down and went on to co-create DreamWorks. It opened just one month after Disney and Pixar's Toy Story but it ended up making around $11 million and got mixed reviews. Roger Ebert liked it though, so who cares what anyone else says? And since its release, it's gathered a pretty decent cult following, and I guess you could consider me a part of that. Now for the plot. Based on a true story, Balto tells the story about a half-wolf, half-dog hybrid who is cast away by both his dog and wolf brethren. Yeah, this film isn't exactly what I would call subtle. It takes place in Alaska in 1925, right when most of the town's children start to become ill with diphtheria. With the medicine unable to be delivered by plane or train, a group of sled dogs led by an egotistical steel head off to pick it up. But along the way they get lost, and Balto must go and save them, and along the way has a spiritual journey and has to find himself, and all that good stuff. And there are some other characters such as the Russian goose Boris, the polar bears Muck and Luck, and the love interest, Jenna. So yeah, pretty simple, and you could probably predict the ending, but there's a certain charm to this film. One thing this movie has that you wouldn't expect for an animated film not made by Disney is star power. Balto is played by Kevin Bacon, Jenna is played by Bridget Fonda, Boris is voiced by Bob Hoskins, Steel is voiced by Jim Cummings, and Muck and Luck are voiced by Phil fucking Collins. <laughs> talking about? Of course he's glad to see us. I... I got nothing. I just... Oh, and it's also narrated by Miriam Margoyles. You know, Professor Sprout from Harry Potter. All the actors do a pretty good job, but some of the characters can be annoying. Muck and Luck, Boris, and this Pomeranian named Dixie can sometimes be funny, but can also be really fucking irritating. But the thing is, the movie doesn't focus on them that much. They all sort of slide into the background once the main conflict starts. Thank you, annoying characters being forgotten halfway through the movie. Why can't more animated films do that? The movie is all about Balto, who isn't the most interesting main character in the world, but he is very likable and you just really want to see him succeed. And there's some creative ways he uses his wolf heritage to overcome obstacles. The animation's really good. Not outstanding, but very well done. Balto and Jenna have some pretty good chemistry. In fact, my favorite scene is between them. Stay close. <laughs> no problem there. It's so gloomy down here. Gloomy? You kidding? It's the most beautiful spot in the world. Dogs travel for years just to be right here. Here? See this? It's the polar ice caps. Balto, those are broken bottles. And they're not half empty. They're all empty. The sun. <sighs> Balto. And to the north. <gasps> the northern lights. I don't care if that's not how light works. That was adorable. But the main reason I like this film is because, despite coming out right smack dab in the middle of the Disney Renaissance, the characters don't sing. It seemed that every animated film in the 90s had to be a musical, and really Disney was the only one who could get it right most of the time. This film doesn't have any. It has some nice background music by James Horner, you know, Star Trek, Aliens, Braveheart, Avatar, but the characters themselves don't sing, and I love that. Just shows they weren't trying to make a movie to compete with Disney, they just wanted to make a good movie. And for the most part, they succeeded. However, there are a few problems. 
Like I said, the movie is pretty predictable, with some pretty generic characters. Some of the characters are kind of annoying, the villain is evil, strictly to be evil, and it isn't really subtle about the whole prejudice thing. And yes, despite being based on true events, how it actually happened is much different. Balto was not half-wolf, the most dangerous one was done by a dog named Togo, not Balto, and well, pretty much Balto was the only character who really existed. So really, it should have just said, inspired by true events. But the film has a charm to it, the characters are likable, it has good animation, and it just leaves you with a good feeling. Maybe I'm looking at it through nostalgia goggles, but I still say the film is worth seeing if you just love the underdog story. You could probably find it in the $5 bin at your local Walmart. In fact, I got it in a two-pack with the first direct-to-video sequel, which we'll look at next time. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. Now if you'll excuse me, there's a 60-foot grizzly bear outside my window.